This is the continuity police, blowing the whistle on a poor job done by the continuity person. In today's program, we look at 10 films that have unforgivable inconsistencies. These continuity people will be brought in front of the judge for sentencing accordingly based on their crimes. First up, Psycho 4, The Extra Bathroom. In the first three Psycho films, we see that Mother's Bedroom matches the outer framing of the house. As most people know, the house itself was a shell with nothing inside it. Sets were created on a soundstage to replicate each room within the Bates home. They did a good job at matching things up until Psycho 4. As you can see here, there's suddenly a bathroom in Mother's room that was never there before. And what's worse is that it contradicts the outer shape of the house. The bathroom in that position would cause there to be a protrusion out of that side of the house, which we do not see in the film. Brought before the judge, you are sentenced to have tea with mother. Next up, Reflections on the Car. Just after the opening titles of the 1967 007 spoof, Casino Royale, three men get out of their limos and get into the lead limo. When the chauffeur is closing the door, you can see the crew in the side of the car, and then what looks like the camera, head-on in the window reflection. Brought before the judge, you are sentenced to be psychedelically tortured by Le Chief. Our third lesson comes from the 1994 Tarantino masterpiece Pulp Fiction, where we see a hidden assailant appear blindly shooting at Vincent and Jules. While we can accept that no bullets hit either of our heroes, it is hard to swallow the fact that the bullet holes were already in the wall before the shooter pulled off the first shot. This is a shameful blunder in an otherwise almost perfect film. Brought before the judge, you are sentenced to pay a visit to Maynard's pawn shop to meet with he and Zed and the Gimp. In The Godfather, Sonny Corleone goes after his sister's abusive husband, Carlos, and gives him what would normally look like a rather rough beatdown on the street. It is painfully clear that not only is the trash can lid not hitting the victim, but a few of Sonny's punches do not meet his face, yet we still hear the connecting blow. This is not so much a continuity error than just bad acting, but the continuity person should have spoken up. Brought before the judge, you are sentenced to be ambushed by Barzini's men at the Long Beach Causeway Toll Plaza. Continuing our mashing of classic films, we find that even Hitchcock goes unnoticed with errors, like this obvious blunder in North by Northwest, where the kid in the background holds his ears before the gunshot goes off. Naturally, he had heard it for a few takes and was already prepared ahead of time when the director called action. They used that as the final take. Even Hitch should have caught this and had it corrected before editing the final film. Brought before the judge, you are to be chased down and eliminated by enemy crop duster planes. And as an honorable mention, in terms of reacting before the action happens, the same occurred on the TV show NCIS, when one of the agents takes a bullet to the forehead. As you can see here, Agent Dinozo flinches beforehand, knowing it was about to happen. 
Next up, Die Another Day, Wounded Tummy. In the climactic fight on the plane, Miranda Frost horizontally slashes Jinx's stomach, causing a bloody wound. Later, when Bond and Jinx are pouring diamonds on each other, you can see her stomach is completely fine with no cut or injury whatsoever. Brought before the judge, you are sentenced to be tortured in North Korea for 14 months and then have your double O stasis reneged. Back to the future. Christ's birthday. In the first of the Back to the Future films, Doc Brown enthusiastically shows off his DeLorean time machine to Marty McFly, who is amazed by what it can do. When showing Marty the time display panel, he gives examples of dates in the past that they can go to visit historically significant moments. Doc mentions witnessing the birth of Christ and types in December 25, 0, 0, 0, 0. Well, first, we know that Jesus was not born exactly on that day. It is the day his birth is celebrated. He was also not born in the year zero. The Gregorian calendar begins with Christ's birth as being circa 6 to 4 BC. And even further to that, should they have been able to go back to the right moment to see Christ's birth, how would they get to Bethlehem? The DeLorean would appear in the same spot it left in Hill Valley, California, and it would not be possible to drive to this location. Brought before the judge, you are sentenced to drive into a manure truck driven by Biff Tannen. Diamonds are forever. Magic car. One of the most popular bloopers in the James Bond series is that of this, from Sean Connery's last official 007 caper, Diamonds Are Forever. In the final cut, the car can be seen hitting the platform and going into the slender alley this way. When it emerges on the other side and onto the street, it is clearly facing the other side. While the story goes that it was filmed correctly, Director Guy Hamilton realized there were too many onlookers on the street at the time the car came out, so it was refilmed. Unfortunately, the new footage was shot backwards. Using a little trick seen here, the camera shifts from Tiffany's side to Bond's side to magically correct its position so that it looks less erroneous when it is revealed on the other side. Brought before the judge, you are sentenced to have a live scorpion stuffed in your mouth and dropped down your shirt when you least expect it. The Rocky series, Mickey's age discrepancy. The Rocky timeline is full of errors, so this time we will only focus on one for this episode. Mickey Goldmill, Rocky's manager, dies in August 1981, and a news report states that Rocky is 34 years old. However, there is a continuity error, as Mickey tells Rocky that he is 76 years old in the first movie, which was late 1975. This would have meant he was born either 1898 or 1899, but his memorial plaque in Rocky III says that he was born in 1905. Brought before the judge, you are sentenced to get clobbered by clubber. Lang, that is. The Terminator series. Sarah and John Connor's age discrepancies. Wrapping up this edition of Continuity Police, case number two, is one more series that gets the characters' ages wrong from one movie to the next. In the first Terminator movie, Sarah Connor is 19 years old 
in the year 1984. It is accurately mentioned in Terminator 2, taking place a decade later, that she is 29. However, Terminator 3 shows that she was born 1959, which would make her much older in the earlier films. The same is treated with John Connor's age. At the end of the first movie, Sarah is pregnant with John, and he is born early 1985. This is accurately mentioned in Terminator 2, as a bulletin shows in a police car notes his birthday making his age 9 going on 10. In Terminator 3, they say he was 13 during the events of the second movie. It is a real head shaker when movie makers cannot keep such character continuity straight throughout a series. Makes me angry. Brought before the judge, you are sentenced to experiencing the real Judgment Day with John Connor at Crystal Peak. That's all for now. Until next time, just remember, no movie is perfect. But damn it, continuity person, at least do your job right, or you will be brought to justice. I'm Steve L. Greenfield.